Easy guys, Dom here from Cringy Dad Gaming. So welcome to my live walkthrough tutorial of No Man's Sky. This is a beginner's guide to help you get off the first planet that you spawn on. No Man's Sky recently received a big update which has changed a lot within the game and there's been a lot of fresh interest in it. So you may be new to the game and trying to wrap your head around the initial game mechanics. Or you may be returning to the game after some time away and just really needing to get over some of that rust that may have built up since. Bear in mind this is not edited, it is recorded live, so you may find this walkthrough tutorial to be a little longer than normal, but if you're new to the game I would recommend watching it and playing along or watching it at least first before trying to do it yourself, just to give you a few pointers of what you need to do. Bear in mind that each world that you spawn into could be different as they are randomly generated. The overall quest that you do at the beginning is the same though throughout each planet. As you notice our scanner is damaged, that's the first thing we're going to want to repair in this. Each planet has its own set of risks. And the mining tool is what we're going to need to be able to collect certain resources. So the first thing we need to do is collect ferrite dust. We need this to be able to repair our hazard suit. And the reason why we need ferrite dust to help us repair our hazard suit is because this is what we're going to need to be able to repair our scanner. And the scanner is going to allow us to find sodium, which is what we need to repair our hazard suit. Now you need to do this really quick at the beginning because as you can see our hazard suit is flashing on the left hand side. It's nearly run out of what it needs. So pressing the touchpad of the PS4 controller we can now click on our scanner here. And now we've got enough ferrite dust to be able to move the thumbstick to be able to hover over damage scanner part and press X to repair. Now what we can do is press down on the L3 button to be able to scan. Now a scan we're looking for sodium which is a yellow symbol over here. See? Sodium rich plant. We need to get down here now. You can run a little bit by pressing down on the R3 thumbstick but you will run out of stamina quite quick. You see monsters like this you may just want to avoid them because we don't know at this stage if they're hostile or not. Pressing X will allow you to use your jetpack again only for a certain amount of time. Now this is quite tight here because we've nearly ran out of our hazard protection. Now if we press the touchpad again, go to hazard protection, we've got some sodium which we can use to help recharge that hazard suit. Now this is something you will have to do on a regular basis, make sure that hazard suit is charged. Now we've detected our starship signal, we can find this and start repairing it to help us get off the planet. First I just want to add a little bit more to that hazard protection. Alright, so see this little symbol over here? You can view it there, your starship. Distance 350 units, if that's what the U stands for, I'm guessing it could be. So let's make our way over towards our starship. Now we're not going to worry about that hazard suit. Now some of the planets and some of the views in this game are absolutely fantastic. And just while we're up here on this fantastic view, by pressing down on the directional pad on the controller, brings up a new list of options with quick select. We can actually go to photo mode which will actually allow us to take some fantastic photos. I thought I would just point this out to you guys and you just press the share button as you normally would to be able to take the screenshots but I think this here would make a fantastic thumbnail for our video that we're making now with the tutorial so let's just do that now and uh, we've already got a fantastic thumbnail there to be able to use. So, let's continue onward bound then. 
So as you can probably tell if you've played it before, the game has received some polished graphics. I'm playing this on the PS4 Pro, so I can definitely see a difference anyway, because when I originally played No Man's Sky for the first time, it was on the standard PlayStation 4. So here we go, we've got to our crashed ship, we've now got to repair. Now you can actually go inside your ship to be able to recharge your hazard suit. So as you can see this is telling everything that's not working. So there's some RPG elements here, story and such which you can read through at your own leisure. I'm just going to kind of skip through this. Self guide repair protocols initiated. So this is downloaded information to our suit to allow us uh, to see what we need to repair. So it says here that the technology is critically damaged and to fix the pulse engine we need a uh, hermetic seal and metal plating. So this is what we're looking for next. Now we can just literally press on the touchpad again and if we just go into our inventory and press R1 to scroll across to Starship, if we look at the pulse engine here it shows you what we need so if you forget it's there but what we can do to be able to know what we need to make is by hovering over one of these blank spaces. By clicking on it it will show you what you can produce and when we go down to metal plating it shows us what we need to make this with. It says we need the ferrite dust again which is absolutely easy to find, it's just general rocks. In here it will also tell you how to make other items that we're going to need as well and sometimes you can scroll down and there's a few extra products down below that you can make. Let's start by collecting a little bit more of this ferrite dust which we will find from general rocks. So here's some general rocks over here. Watch these robots, if they fly over to you, don't continue shooting your laser, just run away, let them uh, eventually get disinterested in what you're doing and uh, disappear, because otherwise they will start shooting you, they will become hostile, don't try shooting them either, unless it is pretty much, uh, you know, to protect yourself. So we should have enough ferrite dust now to be able to create one of those uh, metal platings. So we've got our metal plate in, but what we need to do now is we need to find that other item that we needed to repair it. We need to find that hermetic seal. Now we're not going to find that here or be able to create it. We've got to be able to actually find it it's somewhere else missing uh, within this particular planet. So let's just first do what the instructions are telling us to do and that's patch the metal place it plating onto the pulse engine by again pressing down on the touchpad. So once you press down on that you can see now we can add one of those items that will now allow the instructions to continue on what we need to do next. There are a few things for you to explore around here and um, things like this which you can repair to be able to open and we'll, we'll cover that a little bit later on before we leave. But some things will have stuff in here that you can pick up but the distress signal here is very important. You do need to click on this because this is also part of the story. So what we want to do is broadcast it. Traveller anomaly detected. So now we've gone back into the ship, we can see that we've got a new set of instructions. Vital ingredients are missing, enable to synthesize required components. So the pulse engine requires now the hermetic seal. So request assistance. So we've got to get the salvation navigation data from the distress beacon cache. 
So we go back to the distress beacon. We get more story elements, but this is all part of the process here. We want to take the navigation data. So we've got the navigation data. Now we need to make a signal booster. Again, this requires more ferrite dust, so all we've got to do again is find another rock nearby in which we can just get enough ferrite dust to make it. We need 50 ferrite dust in order to make the signal booster. There we go, we've got enough now. So what we can do now is craft our signal booster. So pressing down on the touchpad of the controller again. Literally link on any item in here and Actually, if I remember rightly, it's not in here. It is actually on the directional pad. If you press up on the directional pad, that is where you find a signal booster. See, even I still, after all the time I've played it, still sometimes forget where stuff is. And this is why this is really, really important for you to be able to uh, know where it is. But we can't actually build it yet because we need other items. So by going back into our inventory, we can actually make the metal plate in, which is one item that's required for it. What else do we require for it? Carbon nanotubes. We can make carbon nanotubes as well, but we just need a few more items. So we need carbon to be able to make it using your scanner. Let's go and find some carbon. You usually tend to find greenery, uh, like trees and plants and things like that, uh, has carbon. So let's run over to these trees here and see if it will allow us to get some carbon from it. Yes, it will. Right, let's have a look and see if we've got enough to make some carbon nanotubes now. I think we have, yeah. Alright, so have we got enough now to make this? So we need sodium, so remember the sodium is the yellow that we need for our life support system. We've got some of that over here, so that's cool. So let's go and find that. I'm going to take a little bit extra because we may need it for our life support system at some point for our hazard suit, hazard protection. Right, have we got enough now to make it? Yes, we have. So what we can do now is just literally place our signal booster. It doesn't matter where you place it. You can place it anywhere you want. But now what we can do is click on this and we can use that information that we've got to be able to locate what we're looking for. So we want to input that navigation data. So we want to scan for distress frequencies because this is how we're going to find this particular thing that we need to fix our ship. It scans a good wide area for that distress signal. There we go, that's what we're looking for. So before you start running across to go and find that, what we're going to do is we are going to actually get in our ship for a second and just let our hazard protection go back to the top. However, the life support systems like your oxygen is not gonna actually refill itself without using something else. So what we wanna do is we wanna get some oxygen which we can actually create at a later time or get some uh, capsules that you can find or create. So at this point, we're not able to refill that because we don't actually have any in our inventory. We've not found any yet. All right, let's move on now. We'll make do with what we've got. It would help if I was running in the right direction. So this is where we need to be going up here. So let's roll. It is a good distance and this is where the survival elements of the game come into play. You can slowly upgrade things like the uh, 
sprinting and stuff like that. So it's not going to be naff forever. good some of these storms really do take it out of you watch out for these little drones that are watching us these are like the guardians surge for our jetpack with that let's use it Alright, the temperature's dropped right down. Notice at the left hand corner the temperature's dropping right down. You need to keep an eye on that because it will make you aware of temperatures that potentially are going to be hazardous to you. At this point it tells us that we need to seek shelter, caves or buildings, but you won't always have any you know, available for you to kind of hide in. So sometimes it is just a matter of having enough items in your inventory to be able to keep refilling your hazard suit and your hazard protection. Eventually you will be able to upgrade your mining laser so you can actually dig and that allows you in times like this to actually be able to make your own improvised shower by digging tunnels under the ground, which at this point we can't. Here we go, so we found some oxygen rich plants, um, which is what we actually need to be able to refill our oxygen. So what we're going to do now really quick is we're just going to refill our hazard protection and refill our life support as well with our oxygen we just got from those plants. Alright, so now we're good to go. Uh, don't worry because when we do actually get to this section that we're running to now, there is actually oxygen in there and protection as well. Because it is like a, an old abandoned research station that we're looking for. So now the store's clear, storm's clearing, so... Not doing too bad at this stage. I'm not. I'm not died, so that's a good start to a tutorial, I guess. <laughs> not to die. Here we go. Look, this is what we're looking for. Now, just while we get to this stage, because you guys are probably any kind of thoughts running through your head. Now, if you played the original No Man's Sky, you would have noticed that it would have been from the first-person perspective. Now, you've still got those options, and I will just quickly show you some bonus uh, tips. If you press down on that D-pad to bring up this uh, information here, you can do things like uh, scroll through. So you've got gestures now, because you can play this with your friends, so you know, you're able to do gestures and stuff like that. Um, which is cool, but you can also obviously do the photo mode. If you scroll along the other way, you can summon vehicles once you've got vehicles to summon, which at the moment we don't. You can actually start getting some of those. But in utilities, you do have things like being able to toggle your torch on and off, which is very, very important for darker areas. But one of the most important ones in here is toggle camera view. Now, not only can you toggle the camera view into first person like this, but you can also toggle the camera view when you're actually inside your spacecraft. So once you're in space, you can actually go from the cockpit of the ship to a third person view. However, I'm maybe a little bit backwards. Yeah, okay, some people would agree <laughs> I am a little bit backwards. But I mean, in terms of the game, um, because in this game, I actually prefer the third person view for my character, but I actually prefer the first person view from the spaceship. I just find that a lot better for me in playing the game so we the rings around this planet we've just got to get one more picture of this i do like that that's quite looks quite cool doesn't it let's take a screenshot of that as well while we're here we are enjoying the beauty of uh, no man's sky and its vistas here we go so we can warm up a little bit now this is what we're after here let's take it so as you can see, a lot of the interactions on this game are actually holding down the buttons. Uh, if you don't hold down the buttons, you'll be pressing them and nothing will be happening. So those KZZKTKs are supposed to be interference. So it took me a while to figure that out. So I was like, what the hell does that word mean in there? But it is actually 
supposed to be you reading static in between uh, an archive recording where it's kind of corrupted and bad signals and whatnot. You need to get in the RPG element, which is all cool. Alright, let's recover the supplies. There we go, we have the hermetic seal that you need to repair the ship. Happy days. It's always good to look around just in case there's anything you know left in some of these uh, little pods. You sometimes find things in them. Let's have a look at this. Don't have anything to repair these. Eventually you can, and sometimes you find little extras. I'm not going to ruin it for you at this point, but we'll leave that for now. Right, so now at this point, as you can see, it's saying that we've got the Hermatic Seal, but we're unable to locate our starship, because of how far away we are. So what we need to do is we need to use our analysis, or, yeah, an analysis, I don't know how you, analysis, that's, that's better, I sound like a drunken person, analysis visor is what we want to use, but we've got no analysis visor installed. You press down on the L2 button to be able to do this. So what we need to do now is we need to make uh, the actual item. So again, let's go into our inventory. Let's create some of these nano tubes. How many do we need to make that? Let's go to multi tools again by scrolling across, and then within the multi tool section, if we just now click on this. Press in square and then analysis visor. There we go. So we only need one set of nano carbon nanotubes to create that. So now this tool is pretty cool. I do like the visor. Um, by pressing down while you're looking through it, by pressing L2, by pressing down on R3 thumbstick, you will zoom in and out. This is great for scanning different items that you may not be aware of what they are. As you can see here, it's scanning this rock. It's going to tell us what it is. But also, you earn credits, which you can spend at a later time. So, not only do you want to scan everything, but also, if other people, if other people visit your planet, which they can, who are playing online, it will actually say that these things were first discovered by you, and it will actually record you as the person who first discovered them, which I think is pretty cool. The same with the animals as well that you'll come across creatures. It will tell you if they're hostile or not. What we can do now is we can scan for our ship. Uh, here's buried technology module over here. Um, we could actually do with one of those actually. So this is not that far away really, and we did pretty much come down this on the hill. I'm sure we did. So let's head back in this direction. Um, when once we get back at the top here, we can have a quick look around. We've got to re find our ship, where our ship is. Subterranean relic. See, this is where the exploration elements come into play with this game, and this is what I really love about No Man's Sky. There we go, now we can see our ship. Our ship is a good distance away, but what we're going to do is continue to go over to this buried technology module, because believe it or not guys, if you do come across one of these on the first planet, it will actually come in handy for you a little bit later on, so just you might as well grab stuff while you're here. Um, I'm not going to scan stuff and explore too much, because as I said, this walkthrough tutorial is already going to be long enough as it is because I'm recording it live so let's just try and crack on shall we and we can leave the expiration for you guys all for me to do once we're finished actually saying that I am getting ahead of myself though because as I remember right this is actually buried and in order to get to the buried technology you do need the mining tool from the from the uh, mining beam which we don't actually have yet I believe so yeah, yet again, I'm always getting ahead of myself. You do have to charge the beam itself. So, at the moment, we've got nothing to be able to upgrade it to. But anyway, there you go, guys. At least you kind of know that that is something that you need to find at some point. We can tag our ship now, and we'll just concentrate on getting back to our ship. No, we didn't go off track too much, so there you go. That's good. Be careful of stuff like this. As you can see, it's quite a steep cliff. I'm going to try and keep a little bit of jetpack just to help us in case we find it too steep. Otherwise, you will die if you fall. 
We'll use that jetpack to be able to uh, save you if that happens. Oh, watch out for the uh, dangerous plants like that. I'm going to collect a little bit of ferrite dust while I'm here actually. That's why we're passing. Oh, one of those dangerous plants again. You will find that on some planets, everything is out to eat you. I guess one of the biggest things I like about No Man's Sky, what they've done, is they've now added the co-op element to it. So you can play online with up to three of your friends, so four of you in total, uh, which I think is pretty cool. They've updated some of the systems on the ships as well, on the spaceships. You've you know now got things like the rockets and stuff like that. The combat seems to be a little bit more uh, fluid now within the spaceships. Am I being followed by this creepy little drone thing? Yeah. I have to limit the sprint, I guess, otherwise it, it would uh, ruin the survival element if you could run everywhere really quick. You need the advanced mining laser to be able to mine that. Let's get some carbon from this tree though while we're here. So you will come across some planets that don't look this similar to our own really to a certain extent and I guess if you really are into science and you will find that there are going to be planets out there in the universe that are quite similar to ours except this one's very cold so obviously a little bit further away from its nearest star than ours. Um, but some planets will seem really alien um, which are also cool, and some of those planets are fantastic. And I said because they're procedurally generated, you will not see the same planet too many times, unless you travel back to that, that planet, of course. Alright, let's get in the warm. Let's go in here. We've now got what we need to repair our pulse engine. So let's get in there and repair the last bit. Job done. So, now what we need to do is repair the launch thruster. We're not going anywhere without the launch thruster. So, we need pure ferrite and we need dihydrogen jelly. Now, if we have a look in here, dihydrogen jelly, um, we can make that from dihydrogen. Now, we can go and find some dihydrogen now we've got a scanner. But we will need to create a portable refiner for this. Again, by pressing up on the directional pad, we can find our portable refiner here. We need to make a metal plate in, but we've nearly got the items we need for this. So let's just make ourselves uh, a metal plate in, which we actually need more ferrite dust for. So let's go and... I know I should have collected more on the way back. I didn't quite mine enough when we were running back. I was hoping I'd have enough in there, but oh well. It doesn't matter too much. Although, look, we've got this pesty thing around there again. I really want to shoot it but I can't because it's just going to interfere with our plan. So let's run away. That's the next best thing isn't it? Run away. Fight or flight. I normally like to fight but you know sometimes you just gotta run away. Alright let's have a look and see if that's enough now. Yeah, it is. So let's make a metal plate in. Job done. Now we can actually make our portable refiner. You can pop it down anywhere you like, really. We'll pop it down here. Now we need to make dihydrogen jelly. Now, let's, if we click on this, we need to first put fuel into it for it to work. Any carbon will work. Let me give it plenty of fuel. Now, when you click on this little thing here, you need to press triangle to transfer stuff. Um, in here it will tell you what will turn into what, so... 
by clicking on it you see sodium goes into sodium nitrate sometimes it is just trial and error with this sort of stuff ferrite dust turns into pure ferrite which is what we need I don't know if I've quite got enough there but you do need pure ferrite so it's worth me just uh, doing this now very quickly with a small amount just to show you what's what. Oh don't forget to actually pick it up out of the uh, maintenance uh, refiner otherwise it's not going anywhere and then press uh, the button to put it in your ship or in your inventory. So we need dihydrogen, so let's find some dihydrogen shall we? We need the blue ones, here it is, dihydrogen crystals. Let's see how much we can refine out of this. If not, there's plenty around here. Right, so dihydrogen, which we can use to go into dihydrogen jelly. Happy days. We have enough there. There is a little bit of patience required sometimes with this thing. You can just leave it to do its own thing by backing out by pressing circle. So we might as well just go and collect a few more resources while that's doing its thing. something flying above us that's a bit weird we can use a scanner to actually scan some of these and you figure out what these things are the flying creatures are harder to scan we might want to get a little bit closer to be able to pick them up as I said scan everything pressing down again on the L3 thumbstick actually allows you to scan the environment for these sorts of things. Uh, weapon, our uh, mining beam has been depleted so don't forget also that you will need to recharge it. We need carbon based so we need to farm one of these trees. Don't worry you're thinking well how can we use the mining beam if we haven't got any uh, power left in it. You can actually use R1 to melee stuff to be able to get a little bit of this. So just slap everything basically. Now we can go in and we should have enough just to give us a little bit of a charge. It might be enough just for us to get a quick amount out of this. Kaboom! We should have enough now to be able to completely recharge that, I would have thought. No, not quite, but that's enough for now. Alright, are we getting on with that? Saying that we don't need to even refine the dihydrogen jelly, and this is just how sometimes complex this game is, because even the amount of time I've played it, sometimes I still get some of these uh, things back to front a little bit. Uh, we've got a dihydrogen in there anyway, so that's happy days. But I think we it, we can actually uh, make some of this stuff without the portable refiner. So, so we've got the dihydrogen jelly, whatever it's called. Now we need pure ferrite, which is what we had to refine a minute ago but I just didn't quite refine enough of it so yet again sometimes it's trial and error let's whack some ferrite dust in there um, let's start that again I don't think there's going to be enough in there so just while that's refining that small amount let's a little bit more quick before the 
drone comes over and starts buzzing around me again. Alright, fell like dust. This should now be enough after this, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it'll be more than enough, I think. Should be enough there now. Job done. Awesome. Ship is repaired, which is pretty much what we were trying to achieve. Don't forget, you can pick up your refiner and you can pick up your signal booster by pressing and holding down on circle we want to take these with us because we are going to use them again we are going to need them again so we still don't have the parts yet to be able to do this so let's just have a quick look before we leave if we can It will be something that you will make from the portable refiner, but because we're pushed for time in this tutorial, we're just going to leave that for now and you guys can play around that at a later time. But let's just get down to business that we were originally wanting to do, and that was to actually get off the planet. So now we can just take off by pressing R2. And if we pull back on the left thumbstick, press down on the circle button to boost ourselves up into space and don't avoid any of these asteroids what we'll want to do is we will actually want to shoot some of these so by pressing down on X you can actually use your laser or your photon cannon you can change these to rocket launcher by pressing triangle you want to be close enough to these things to be able to actually uh, shoot them but you will find some of these will give you some good resources so we've got an incoming message at the moment. What I'm going to do is I am going to leave you guys here to be able to now really kind of get into No Man's Sky and enjoy everything that it has in terms of its RPG elements, its survival mechanics and just overall exploration of uh, the galaxies while you try to find the centre of the universe. So I will catch you guys on another video. If you found this walkthrough guide helpful at all, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And thanks for watching.